Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. In this tutorial, we are closing up with chapter 2 with the sample question discussion on this. The very first important thing to understand is there are 5 questions which will be asked to you from this chapter now. So we have restructured the examination pattern and there are different number of questions compared to the previous labels now. So in this chapter, you have five questions which they will be asking you and you have five marks to be secured from this chapter. So let's get into the very first question here. Uh, given the following statements about the relationship between the software development activities and the test activities in the software development life cycle. So we have four statements here and if you recall the good characteristics of testing to be applied to any methodology is what we are talking about. So if you see the four statements here, the first one, each development activity should have corresponding testing activity. Uh, we know that this is one of the good characteristics of testing. Reviewing, reviewing should start as soon as the final version of the document becomes available. Now, as soon as the drafts are available. If once the document is finalized, there's no point reviewing it. Three, the design and implementation of the test should start during the corresponding development activity. Now, generally we say that it is the analysis and design are the activities which should be done during the corresponding development activity. So, let's look at the fourth one. Testing activity should start in the early stages of the software development lifecycle. Of course, that's one of the principles as well. Early testing, which supports the tester's involvement, should be done as early as possible in the life cycle. So, as we were going through the statements, we have understood that there are two statements which are correct and the other two are wrong. Let's look at the question precisely. Which of the following correctly shows which are true and false? Now, I think we are very much clear that one and four are true. The other two are having a conflict with these studies what we have. So, Finally, the right answer is D here. The next question is, given that the testing being performed has the following attributes, that is, based on interface specification. So the very first point here is to talk about interfaces, that is to validate the data flow. Second, focused on finding failures in communication. So again, it is about the data transfer and communication between the modules. The test approach uses both functional as well as structured test types. So it is limited to functional as well as structured. That means it is a functional level as well as it is a approach is white box testing. Which of the following test level is most likely to be being performed? So we are just trying to ask you by giving these facilities and characteristics that which level are we talking about? So we have component integration testing, acceptance testing, system and component testing. Now we know that interface specification will be the basis for inter integration system and acceptance. So we have few options which can conflict here. Next, focused on finding failures in communication. Of course that applies to uh, integration system and acceptance as well. But uh, when we look at the third point it says it uses both functional and structural. Now structure is limited to component and component integration. So now when we say a structural and we say data uh, interface specification, it generally means that it is component integration, not component testing because component testing does not deal with interface specification. So finally, we have only one option that is component integration testing, which is basically being conducted. If we had an option integration, then we would have had a choice to pick something from there. But right now, it is CIT, Component Integration Testing, which can be also conducted as white box testing type. The next question is three, which of the following statements about the test types and the test level is correct? So generally, we are talking about uh, the test types, white box, black box, and the test levels, component integration system. Functional and non-functional testing can be performed at system and acceptance test level while white box testing is restricted to component and integration. The second part is fine, the first part is wrong. Only functional testing can be performed in the four levels, that is unit, that is component, integration, system and acceptance. Functional testing can be performed at any test level, while white box testing is restricted to component. Okay, It is possible to perform functional, non-functional and white box testing at any test level. No, you do not generally conduct non-functional at just any test level. 
it is only limited to non-functional levels of testing. Functional and non-functional testing can be performed at any test level. I think I don't really have to repeat these answers because we understand that we have in these syllables only functional levels to understand and we are not talking about any of the non-functional testing first of all team. So you are not going to pick anything which is related to non-functional. So we have only one option which is absolutely right with the scenario. That is there's only functional testing which you can perform at any level. Any level means what the syllabus is talking about. These are the four levels, unit integration, system and acceptance. And while white box testing technique is used only for component testing. Next, which of the following statements best compares the purpose of confirmation testing and regression testing? So I don't really have to understand this like, you know, going through the content and making you understand with each option. We know that confirmation is to confirm if the defect which was reported has been fixed. And regression is all about making sure this fix does not have any kind of adverse effect on the other part of the module. So there's one straightforward, the option is B, which gives the right answer to you with exact definition of confirmation as well as regression testing. And we other options are conflicting with those definitions and they are giving it vice versa. So you can eliminate the A, C, D and pick only B. There is no such confusions. If you have anything else, you can comment below. Fifth question from this session is which of the following statements correctly describes the role of impact analysis in maintenance testing? I think just the previous tutorial we'll be talking about maintenance testing uh, throughout the life cycle. So post release, we take care of maintenance, which is about uh, updates, upgrades, and all. So we have few options to take care of. Impact analysis is used when deciding if a fix to a maintained system is worthwhile. Okay. Impact analysis is used to identify how data should be migrated into the maintained system. No, it's not about data migration. It is about environment migration. So B is ruled out. C. Impact analysis is used to decide which hot fixes are of most value to the user. Uh, exactly does not depend on the user. It is just the hard fixes which you make as a change. So whatever updates you make, whatever changes you make, you call it as hot fixes. But really it does not make sense like whether it is going to be as per the user or user wanted this. Impact analysis is used to determine if the effectiveness of the new maintenance test cases. No, impact analysis is actually a study of finding how much regression is required when we make a new fix. So I think there's only one thing which is most relevant to understanding of impact analysis, which generally helps you to determine how much regression should be performed when it comes to any kind of update or upgrade when it is done on application. So team, that's all from here in this tutorial. These are the sample questions on maintenance testing, which adds value to your preparation, as well as makes you understand that what typical type of questions can appear from chapter two. So in case you have any clarifications or you come across any other question from this chapter, feel free to share with me in the comment below. And I'll be there to give you more detail and understanding of the right answer and the other options justification. Stay tuned for upcoming tutorial. We'll be getting started with chapter three soon. So we'll be having tutorials on chapter three. For that, just quickly subscribe to the channel, which will help you to get quick notifications about the tutorial and stay tuned for more knowledge on ISTQB Foundation. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.